Well, here we are with the uh, newest version of the Folsom FL Base Delta Kit. It uh, just arrived in my doorsteps yesterday, so last night I put it together. It took about six and a half hours for me to assemble it, including the wire management to make it neat. There seem to be so many different uh, versions of this out there because they, they keep upgrading, keep changing. But I thought it would be interesting to see what it, where it was at right now. So as of uh, February 15th of 2018, this is the version that they're shipping, or at least this is the one that I got when I ordered it. It uh, has the heated bed. It has the control board as an external unit. I got the camera on a stand so that it won't be so jittery, but I'm going to move you over here. Here's the control board. That's actually the bottom side of it, the top side, because you can mount it any way you want. I decided to mount it on this back side of the frame like this for wire management reasons. It's very easy to keep uh, everything neatly tucked and pulled that way. It has uh, dual fans that blow on the control board steppers and MOSFETs to keep them cool. The only uh, acrylic parts in the whole machine are the acrylic parts that are housing the control board. All the other plastic parts are injection molded as they have been all along. And of course the rest of the parts are aluminum. Um, let's see. Power supply. I went ahead and bolted it right to the rail. I like everything as one piece when I pick it up. Uh, it didn't come it came with a US plug, which is where I'm at, but it didn't come with a grounded plug, so I just wired in my own grounded plug. There's no uh, power switch, so that would be a mod a lot of you guys might want to do is to uh, add a power switch to the whole thing. One question I'd like to ask all of uh, you that may have this machine, or and may have reviewed it, in fact, if you own this machine or you've done a review on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment down below and leave a link to your YouTube. Uh, I think anyone that's interested in this type of machine needs information and the best way to get information is for everybody to share. So don't feel like you're uh, bombing my, uh, my video by putting your information there, but to the contrary, do it. If you have a Facebook uh, group on this machine, put a link to it. If you did a YouTube video for it, put a link to it. The more information, the better. It's kind of interesting to see how the product develops, how they keep changing it. One of the things that I, that I first noticed when I opened it up were the aluminum rods that they're using for the effectors. And they're actually tubes, aluminum tubes, so they're very lightweight and very sturdy. And that's fine, but I'm not so sure about these very inexpensive uh, joints that they're using. So I'd love to hear from any of you that have had this printer for a while, any of the early versions of it. Uh, comment down below how those bearings are holding up, or if you've upgraded to something better love to hear about it. The only, and the other thing that I've never had on any of my printers, and I've had a dozen printers, I've never had an, an extruder that wasn't somehow spring tensioned. This one you tighten a wing nut so it's physical. There's no no real, uh, it doesn't automatically adjust. <laughs> so how does that work for all you? It seems to be working great for me. I mean I've, I've never had one like that before but uh, just wanted to know how that's all worked for you or if that's something that you've upgraded and changed. As you can see it uh, is a very clean build. It was actually fun to build. Uh, the instructions have tons of errors but there's enough pictures and if you combine that with common sense then you, you'll work your way through that. And honest to God I just powered it up for the first time and this is the test print on the SD card. I did do the uh, auto home level first so it, it did that automatically and then I put the tape down because it doesn't come with a build surface and I don't know what it's making but it looks really cool whatever it is. It's all kinds of fins around uh, and they're all very clean and very exact looking and this is the first print right out of the box, first power up so pretty cool not having to dink with anything. I did try to download their version of Cura that's supposed to have the profile for this machine, but try as I might, it, it only downloads it with uh, in Chinese. I know the, I've watched the video saying how you're supposed to do it and get it to go into English, but my download procedures are different steps than their videos, so 
Lord only knows on which Chinese word I'm supposed to click to make it say English. I don't know. I'll probably download it again on my computer and even if it's in Chinese I'll just leave it that way because I've used Cure like most of you for enough years that even if you can't read what's in the box you know what that box does because you've, you've fooled with it enough times so that's probably what I'll do just to have the profile but uh, came with this sample green PLA which I've got on my anti cubic stand and um, that's what it's printing was the PLA that came with it also when the build is done, this is kind of cool, you got plenty of extra hardware so they don't short, short you on any of that. You got your normal USB type cord and you have spares. You even have a spare, uh, spare stepper driver, spare thermosistor, uh, spare limit switch, and the little heat sinks for the stepper drivers, although I couldn't see how I could put them on the board the way it's laid out now. But there are two cooling fans blowing right on it, so I'm really not worried about the stepper drivers getting hot. It comes with enough tools to put the thing together, but it would be really hard to do because of the way the nuts and bolts tuck inside all these extruded parts. So I used uh, some very inexpensive ball-end hex, hex drivers instead, which made life a whole lot easier. That, that six and a half hour build would have been a lot longer if I'd been using the little Allen wrenches that came with this thing. So I'll see some of the other questions. Let's see. Okay, uh, there are a lot of metal filings on all of the extruded aluminum channel parts when you get them from the chop saw. Uh, fortunately, I'd say about 90% of the filings do stick to the uh, protective plastic covering that's uh, on the on the metal when it comes. I'm going to try to set this camera on the tripod here so I can move around. Um, so you don't have to do too much clean up there, very minimal. I have the vacuum out just in case, but I didn't need it. Uh, a lot of errors on the, the build. Well, on the SD card that comes with it, there's kind of a build manual, kind of a tutorial. And there, there are a lot of errors in that, but Again, like I said, if you just think about what they're doing and the order and everything, you can you can work around it and you get it to work pretty good. One thing I didn't really like about the design is there are a lot of machine screws that just screw into the uh, injection molded plastic parts. And in some cases that's fine, but in other cases like the limit, uh, the auto positioning limit switch on the uh, hot end, those screws just I mean, they, you could just push them in and out. They didn't thread in tight enough to really hold the switch there. So I had to go out and dig through my junk boxes till I came up with some screws that were slightly larger and yet would fit through the switch and would hold it in place. I suppose you could glue the switch, but that'd make it hard to replace if you ever broke it. Uh, the two fans on the hot end are... Um, yeah, they're both just pressure fit. They it's push in to the case. They, they're not screwed in or anything, so I, I don't know about that. I mean, they're sitting there, but no wire management instructions, so they leave that completely up to you how you want to do the wire management to make it look neat and clean. Just like the placing of the control board and the placing of the power supply, that's completely up to you. You can hang them wherever you want. Uh, what else do we want to talk about? Spares. We talked about. Oh, when I was talking about the spares, I didn't mention that there were uh, also two spare nozzles. Not yep, there in there. So two spare uh, nozzles for the hot end as well. And then if you want to look the machine up, it's supposed to have a 180 millimeter diameter bed build by a 300 millimeter tall. And we already talked about to keep the bed auto level. And I really think that's about it. I'm going to upgrade the bare aluminum bed that this one came with with uh, one of these inex inexpensive build tack type sheets. I'll cut it around and stick it on there. But quite impressed overall uh, for a very inexpensive delta of this size working right out of the box. I, would, I really didn't think I would. I would I figured I would have made some mistakes just due to all the guessing that I was doing, but uh, seems to be working just fine.
seems to be doing a good job. I'm going to have a link for GearBest, which you can use if you want to look at it, but you can obviously other people sell us too. When I uh, ordered this, the uh, machine was on a flash sale at uh, $179. I think right now it's sitting around $224 or something like that. Still not very much money for the size of the build and for a full kit, you know. As crazy as it sounds, sometimes you pay a little bit more for kits than you do for uh, assembled things. In this case, I don't know. It's 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 not much money in the first place. We could, uh, I guess, we could talk about the carriages. The carriages out surprisingly uh, move really smooth and didn't have any slop at all. I really figured they would, but they don't. And there are little screws that, if you want to tighten in the third wheel, you can just tighten that screw and you can cinch it up even more. Belt tensioning wasn't a big deal. As you can see, the belts just loop in like on all machines. And then when you get ready to tighten them, because when you put them on, they're a little bit loose, there are screws up on the top that you uh, tighten, and it basically raises the top. When you assemble it, you purposely put this top piece down a little bit. Then as you tighten it, it stretches the belts tight, so it makes it real easy to uh, adjust your belt tensioning. Like I said, it's a pretty easy build. Instructions could be a lot better, um, but obviously they're good enough or I wouldn't have been able to do it because I went into this knowing absolutely nothing about this, uh, this printer. Well, since then, since this morning actually, I started looking on YouTube and I saw that there have been all kinds of earlier versions where stuff was just piled up under the heat bed and, and all, all kinds of uh, ugliness in the past, but uh, this version's pretty clean. Pretty nice looking. It's very sturdy. It's very rigid. I think it could be a, a fun uh, first build if you're into building kits. And I believe that's about it.